something felt right. I don't know what it was, but it was something that lit up inside of me that had never lit, inside, lit up inside of me before. When something drains energy from you, that is the universe telling you, hey, dude, this ain't it. Every single second is here for you to grow. One of the questions that I get asked more than anything else on social media is how do I find my passion? How do I find my purpose? How do I find the way that I can come alive and what it is I need to do? And, and I think it's an important question. I think it's something that people need to think about uh, every freaking day, if I'm being honest with you, because you only get one life that we're aware of. Maybe we do get more, maybe we don't, but nobody has any actual physical proof that there's anything after this. So then I'm going to try to make this the best life that I possibly can. And I'm going to give you some stories about my life and how all of this relates to me and why hearing the question, what if money was no object, completely changed the way that I saw my life. So before we start, I want to tell you this. When I was 27 years old, the first 27 years of my life, by the time I had 27, was all focused on how I can accumulate and make as much money as I possibly can. My life, besides hanging out with people and doing other things, like my life, the core of it was how can I make more money? How can I make money? How can I be successful? And I know I'm not alone in this. I know this is most people's number one goal. There was a study, I said this a couple episodes ago, that 80% of millennials, number one goal was to become rich. So I'm not the only person who really just was, their goal was to make money. Many people live the exact same way that I lived. And um, what happened with me when I was 27 years old was super important for the story that I'm going to tell you. At 27, I was working a high paying sales job. I was making about $200,000 a year. So for a 27 year old, pretty damn good money. And um, in my, the company that I was with decided to just get rid of their sales department, right? So their sales department for the company that I was with, they're just like, hey, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of everybody. So there's only five of us at the time. They got rid of everybody. And what happened with me was they gave me the opportunity to stay at the company, but take a massive pay cut and switch to a different position. And so I had to sit down with, you know, the head person of my department and I had to sit down with the CEO and, um, the CEO gave me some really good advice. And he basically said, it seems like you're more passionate about this other thing that you're doing. I had a podcast that I just started and I'll dive into that. It seems like you're really passionate about that. Why don't you pursue that? And I already knew in my heart that that's what I wanted to pursue, but I didn't really have the confidence to go ahead and pursue it. And you know, I was making $200,000 a year. I had to make a big decision. I could go find another job. Like in sales, they always say, if you're in sales, you always have a job. I could have easily found another job and made pretty good money, right? But there was something inside of me that told me that I should do something else. And this was six years ago, just so you know, and podcasts were not what they are now. They weren't even close to what they are now. Nobody really knew what podcasts were. When I used to tell people that I was a podcaster, um, they would, they, I would get three responses. Number one, what is a podcast? That was my number, the number one response. Number two, I've heard of podcasts, but I don't know how to listen to them. That was the number two response. And number three was, oh, I love podcasts. And that was very rare, right? So six years ago, podcasts are not what they were back then what they are now. And my podcast, the exact same podcast, it's now, ca now called The Mindset Mentor, obviously. Back then was called MWF Motivation, came out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like it still does. And I was making zero dollars on the podcast. Let me say that again, zero dollars. I decided to not go and get another high paying job. And I decided to pursue my passion even though at that point in time I was making zero dollars. I had no advertisers on the podcast. Nobody was paying me any money. I wasn't getting enough downloads for that. Number two, I had no products in my own business that I could sell people. I had no coaching services. I had nothing. Literally zero dollars was how much money I had made off my podcast in all of my services because the services actually didn't even really exist. But I didn't know how to make any money online. I didn't know, I knew that people did. And to be honest with you, I didn't know if I could make money off of my podcast. I didn't know if I could make money off of coaching services. I didn't know if it was possible, but I had this feeling um, deep down inside of me that this is what I should do. And I had at least a little bit of money in the bank account. And I was like, you know what? I've got a little bit of money. I can try this out for six months to a year. If it doesn't work, I can always go back to making money again and being a salesperson. But there's something in my heart that tells me like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm going to figure it out. And I, f I felt like this was my calling. I felt like this is my passion. Um, and it logically didn't make any sense because logically you look at it and you say making $0 versus making a couple hundred thousand dollars. 
the average person is going to go, just go make the money, right? That's what the logical side of it. But when you think about it from like what my heart was telling me, what my passion was telling me, it was, hey, you should go and pursue this thing because it seems like it's the right thing. Like this feels right. It feels like something that you'd actually love to do. So logically, it made no sense, but it just felt right. It felt something felt right. I don't know what it was, but it was something that lit up inside of me that had never lit, inside, lit up inside of me before. And it was this feeling of like, yep, this is in full alignment with who I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do, right? And I'm bringing this up and I'm telling you this story because now obviously it, people come up to me like, hey, I want a successful podcast like you. And I'm like, well, you got to do 900 episodes. That's what I've done. You've got to go for six years. That's what I've done. You know, you've got... It, you look at it and it's like, we have, you know, 10 employees now and between everybody who's, who works for the company, about 15 people across the board, you know, and we've got a, a multi-million dollar coaching business, but it came from literally zero, no followers. You know, people see and they're like, oh, I want 2.5 or 3 million followers, whatever we have at this point. I want a big podcast, all of these things. People want it. I understand it. But most people are not willing to step out into the unknown, into what seems illogical to follow their heart. And so I want to ask you that question. You know, is there something inside of you that logically does not make sense as far as on spreadsheets, how much money you're going to make, all of that stuff, but it just feels right? Is there? Think about that for a second. Let it set in. Is there something inside of you that says, I should go follow this passion, right? Because that's what we're going to dive into. I wanted to give you my story to, to make you realize it can go from zero to millions of followers and millions of dollars quite quickly if you're following the thing that is actually your passion, right? So when I'm talking about this, I want you to think to yourself, what is it that I want to do, right? Um, and sometimes following your dream doesn't logically make sense. It doesn't. Being a painter might not, quote unquote, logically make sense. Being a musician might not. Being a creator might not make sense. Whatever it is, it might not make sense to the average person. But for some reason, there's something inside of you that goes, yeah, this makes sense, right? When I told everybody I was going to not go back and not take a pay cut and not do any of those things and not go back to the company or try to find another job because I was going to find my passion, people were like, you're crazy. And I was like, I know, but watch. And now they're like, oh, sh you were right. So is there something inside of you that feels right, right? Let's dive into that. What would you do if money were no object? If money did not exist, there was no money, what would you do with your free time? And I asked myself this question. This is a, a question posed by Alan Watts, one of my top two favorite philosophers in the entire world, him and Ramdas, right? And he says, what would you do if money were no object? I remember seeing that video and thinking, what would I do if money were no object? And what I do now, I am obsessed with. Before I started the podcast, I was already obsessed with neurology, psychology, early childhood development, what makes people tick, watching people in conversation and watching people and trying to, to figure out why they are the way that they are based off of their childhood, based off of their parents. I was already obsessed with all of that stuff. And I'm still obsessed with it. But what's cool is I'm obsessed with it and now I can teach it to people and make money in different ways as a teacher, as a coach, as a facilitator, as a speaker, all of these things. So. What would you do if money were no object? If money was not something, if you didn't have to worry about paying the bills and all of your bills are just paid for, you could eat, your family is taken care of, you were taken care of, all of that stuff. What would you do with your free time? If you had to do something besides just sitting on the couch, hanging out with your kids on Instagram, whatever it is, what would you do if money were no object, right? Think about it. What is that thing? What makes you come alive? What makes you tick? What makes you feel like this is the reason why I'm here? What gives you energy just thinking about, right? What gives you energy by going and doing? You feel better. You feel more alive. You feel like that's something that just feels good. We live in a society <clears throat> where we think too much. We think about things. And that's why I say logically it made sense for me to go back and just get another sales position. It, logically, it makes sense. That's a thinking thing but it didn't feel like that was the right thing for me. So what is it that feels right for you inside of your body, right? And I understand that some of you out there that are listening, you have children, you have families, you have mortgages, you have to pay. I understand. You can't just go, you know what? I'm going to quit my job today and I'm going to go and become a painter or whatever the hell that makes you come alive. Maybe you can't do that, but can you start to think of some sort of a transition plan, right? If you have bills to pay, I get it. But can you go, okay, over the next two years, you know, I'm going to go two years from today, I'm going to leave my job. What do I need to do to make that happen? All right, I should probably start saving money. 
Probably start saving money. Okay, I should probably start building an online following. I should probably start painting more. I should probably start making more music. Whatever it is that you are, that is that lights you up, right? I should probably start connecting with other people who are in the same industry, right? Try to figure out what would be an e what would make it easier for you to transition out of what you do now into what it is that you truly want to do. One of the problems is that people want immediate gratification and they think you know what if i want to do this thing that is my passion i have to leave my job today and i have to start making money at the thing that i that is my passion tomorrow no you need to be smart and say if i had to leave two years from today what would my transition plan look like and start to plan it out i can't tell you how many people i've told this to and they've quit their jobs and they've built their own businesses they follow their passions because it takes so much pressure off when you say okay I've got a year, I've got two years, I've got three years to figure this out. I've got to connect with the right people. I've got to get better at my skills. I've got to better my knowledge. I've got to start learning how to make money online, whatever it is that you want to do. And when you have that transition time, it allows you to pay your bills, live your life, feed your family, keep the mortgage, all of that stuff. But at the same time, it allows you to start to learn and grow. And the light at the end of the tunnel starts to become a little bit brighter and a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter. And by the end of the two years, people are like, I've got this, I've got it under control. I'm already making a little bit of cash on this, this thing that I'm doing on the side. It's providing me the life that I want to, whatever it is, come up with a transition plan. If you have a job and you've got a family and you've got a mortgage, and you've got bills, can you come up with some form of a transition plan? What would you do if money were no object? Okay. Some people say, oh, I can't do it because I have children, right? Um, the thing I want to tell you about your children is this. If you haven't realized already, which you probably have, your children are going to follow in your footsteps. They're not going to do what you say that they should do. They're going to do what they see you do. So you might say, hey, honey, follow your passion and follow your dreams and become a creator and be a painter or a musician, whatever it is you want to do. You can do anything that you want to. But if they see you going to a job that you hate just to pay the bills, they're going to think to themselves subconsciously, oh, even though I can be a creator and make amazing things, I'm supposed to hate my job. I'm supposed to just pay the bills. So your children will follow in your footsteps. If they see you work a job that they hate, there's a pretty good chance. Guess what they're going to do? Work a job that they hate just to pay the bills. So what do you want them to see you do? Because whatever you do, they're most likely going to do as well. They learn by what they see, not by what they hear. So wouldn't you rather your children do something that they love? Like if I were to ask you, would you rather your, your, your child be successful or happy? What's the answer to that? Would you rather them be successful or happy? Right? There's a pretty good chance that if, if the, they don't have to choose either one. A lot of times when they start on a path of going to do something that they're happy with, they also become successful as well. So it's not either or, but I guarantee you probably want your children to be happy, right? And if you're working a job that you don't love or it doesn't light you up, what if they were to go do the same thing? What if you were to fast forward 20 years and see your children stuck in the exact same position that you're stuck in? What would that feel like? Think about that. You can't tell them to build their dreams when you're staying in your professional prison prison because they're going to see the exact same thing, right? So next thing, you spend most of your waking hours working. So this should be something that is extremely important to you. You spend most of your waking hours doing work, some form of work, right? So is it a passion? Is it a purpose for you or is it a waste? Think about that. The thing that you should do is listening to this podcast is take a good long look at yourself in the mirror. And I always say this, if you've listened to my podcast long, if you've heard me say this, it's okay not to know what your purpose is right now on this planet. It's okay. You don't have to know at this very moment. But if you don't know what it is, it's not okay to not be in constant search for what your purpose is. Let me say that again. It's okay not to know what your purpose in this world is. It's not okay to not be in constant search for what that purpose of yours is. So if you're sitting there and you listen to this, you might know what your purpose is. You might have a feeling, right? Once again, go with the feeling, go with the gut. Your gut always knows. Your gut is your emotional compass. Your brain tries to talk you out of everything that is outside of your comfort zone. Your gut feeling is your emotional compass. It always knows what you should do. The problem is your gut only speaks to you in feelings. It doesn't speak to you in words. So you've got to feel your way into this. What do I feel is the right step for me? What is it that lights me up? What would make me so excited to do this thing? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Same way, I understand. It's scary as hell. It's so freaking scary to leave what it is that you're doing that's paying your bills, that is safety, in order to basically jump off a cliff and think that as you're jumping, eventually a parachute will build itself, right? I, had a, a, I remember, and I told this story a, a few weeks ago, I remember 
uh, when I was terrified when I first left the job. The month I left the job, I was like, I got to go back to getting another job. I got, I was so used to getting the, uh, the golden rat pellets, as we call them. The golden rat pellets is the paycheck every two weeks, right? It's this golden rat pellet. Uh, and, and so basically it's this thing that you're so used to getting. And when you stop getting it, it kind of scares the shit out of you, right? And I remember being terrified. And I said this a, a few episodes ago, like I said, but I went home and my sister gave me a box that was my dad's stuff. And one of them was a letter that was in there that he wrote to my sister about a year before he passed away. And at the end of it, it said, I hope you live your life with courage, love, and laughter. And I was so terrified that I needed, that, that this whole thing wouldn't work. I was in so much fear. And the opposite of fear is courage. And in this letter said, courage, love, and laughter. And so I literally got it tattooed on my arm. It says, live your life with courage, love, and laughter. It's my dad's handwriting. It's tattooed on my arm because I needed a constant reminder when I was scared shitless every single day that what I was doing was the thing that I was supposed to be doing. It's the thing that, the reason why I was put on this planet, right? And I needed the courage every time I felt the fear. And so every time I'd be like, should I go back to working a job? Should I go back to working a job? Should I go back to those rat pellets? I look at my arm and be like, nope, that. I'm not going to do it. I'll figure it out. If I go broke, if I live on the streets, whatever it is, I'll figure it out, right? The beautiful thing about it though, it'll work out for you. If you get the feeling, the gut feeling that is what you're supposed to do, it will eventually work out. So I'm going to pose the same question to you that I posed to you at the beginning. What would you do if money were no object? Figure out what it is. Follow it. Follow your heart. Do, it is, do what it is you think that you should do. If you don't know what it is right now, it's okay, but it's not okay to not be in constant pursuit for what that thing is. I'm going to give you some strategies on actually coming into alignment with what you're truly supposed to be doing in this world. If you're lazy, if you don't have energy throughout the day to do the things that need to be done, the reason why is because you are out of alignment with what it is that you're truly supposed to be doing in this world. It's that simple. When you are aligned with what it is that you're supposed to be doing, with your true purpose in this world, you don't have to look for energy. It's like the universe just throws energy at you. So go with me as I explain this to you, okay? There's a reason why you're on this earth. I believe that. I don't know what your reason is, but you might know what it is, or you might know that there's a reason, you just don't know what it is. If you don't know what your purpose is at this point, it's okay, it's not a big deal but it's not okay to not be in constant search for what your purpose is on this earth. Let me say that again. It's okay not to know why you're on this earth and what your purpose is at this moment, but it's not okay to not be in constant search for what that purpose is. Otherwise, you're gonna get to the end of your life and wish that you would have done something different, but you don't even know what that something different is. With that being said, you have a purpose. I have a purpose. We all have a purpose, but your purpose might be different than my purpose. Completely cool no big deal. And your purpose might be different than every other person that's listening to this podcast. No big deal. That's good. So what we should be doing is searching for it. And the reason why is this, is if you have a purpose and you're not living in that purpose, think of it this way. When you're, when you're doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing in this world, and you feel like you're on purpose and you feel like you're doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing, it's almost effortless. It's literally as if God or the universe or source or whatever it is that you want to believe in comes through you and provides all of the energy for you. And it's like, you know what? I've got so much energy to go and record podcast episodes because I feel like this is just literally what I'm supposed to be doing. When I get done recording three podcast episodes in a row, just screaming into the microphone, looking at a camera for an hour, an hour and a half. I have more energy after than I did before because it's like the universe or God, whatever it is, throws energy at me and says, yes, this is your purpose in life. I'm going to actually provide the energy for you so you don't have to come up with it. Now, on the flip side of that, this is super important. Come with me here. If you're doing something that is out of alignment with what it is you're truly supposed to be doing, if you're working a desk job that you hate and it's sucking your soul or you're a teacher and you don't want to be a teacher anymore, you thought you just wanted to help children and now you're realizing that's not the way that you wanted to go. Or if you're an accountant or if you're in finance or if you're an HR director or if you're an account executive and you're like, I just freaking hate what I do. It's exhausting, isn't it? Do you want to know why it's exhausting? Because the universe will not provide energy for you to do something that is not in alignment with your true purpose. 
You picking up what I'm putting down? It will only give you energy, more energy than you can handle, more energy than you need to do the thing that you're supposed to be doing. Hmm. Think about that one for a second. I want you to realize if you come back at the end of the day and you're exhausted after working a day in your life, then that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Now, I do want to be very clear with you. It's not like, oh, I never get tired, right? There's good exhaustion. There's bad exhaustion. Good exhaustion would is I'm tired at the end of the day, but my heart is full. Do you feel that way? Tired, but your heart is full. You feel fulfilled. You're like, oh my God, I can't wait to do that again tomorrow. That is good exhaustion. Bad exhaustion is you come home, you're tired, you're dragging ass, your mind is just like, I don't want to be doing this thing again tomorrow. That's good exhaustion versus bad exhaustion. Where do you find yourself living at the end of the day? If you find yourself living in bad exhaustion, you're not supposed to be doing that. That's not your purpose. Your purpose here on this earth wasn't to be, you know, an account executive maybe, or to be an HR director maybe, or to be a CEO maybe, I don't know. But what I'm telling you is if you feel a bad exhaustion, that's not, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. So how do you find what you love to do? How do you find what you love? How do you do that? How do you get there? First off, you got to try some new things. If you don't know what your passion is, first off, if you do know what your passion is, a lot of you probably do, you just aren't accepting it, right? Like you don't know what your passion is. You're not fully accepting what that passion is. So if you do know what it is, try to put a little bit more time into it and see if you start to come alive. See if you start to get more energy from it. That's the universe coming through you saying, hey, this is it. I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna drop some seeds. This is what you want, man. This is what you want. If you don't know your passion, then you've got to try some new things. You probably don't know what your passion is because you haven't found it. You haven't done it yet. So if you haven't found it, you can't wake up tomorrow and do the exact same thing you've been doing for the past four or five years, six years, seven years, because if you just keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. And so if you've never found it based off of what you're currently doing, you're not going to find it by doing the same thing over and over again. So you got to try some new things. You got to try some new stuff. Next thing that will really help you out. I got this from one of my friends. Make a happy list. Make a list of every single thing that makes you happy. It could be huge. It could be small little things. It could be seeing your children come home from school. It could be dropping them off at school. It could be a watermelon popsicle. It could be recording a podcast. It could be whatever it is for you. Just make the biggest list of things that make you happy. That's it and see what you come up with. One of my friends was a uh, like number 13 employee at Facebook and he was fired from Facebook uh, before they went public, like six months before they went public. Then they went public and with his shares that he had to give up, if he would have still had his shares in the company and not been fired, about six months later when they went public, he would have made about $180 million. He made zero. So obviously that sucks. And he started to go into a depression. And then he realized that he was putting himself into a depression. And so what he did was he made a happy list, all of the things that made him happy. And he did as many, every morning he would wake up and he would look at that list and say, how can I bring as many of these things into my day today to make me happy? And he made a happy list and he tried to bring as many of those things. And what he said was, I will not let my depression or my happiness be left up to chance. So he made a plan to make a happy list and to look at that list every single morning. Think about that. Doing things that make you happy is like playing a video game and finding the power up button. It's like, oh, you've got more energy because that's what you want to be doing. That's what you're here to do. Another way to find out what it is that your purpose is, what is your passion, what is that you want to be doing is a strategy called Ikigai, which I love. I don't know if I've found a better strategy for finding what your true purpose is. If you want to make money and find a job or a profession or a vocation, whatever it is that that is whatever it is that you're truly supposed to be doing. So there's four questions to Ikigai. So if you have a pen and paper, you should want to jot these down. Question number one is what do you love to do, right? Make a list of all of the things that you love doing. Write it down. It could be big. It could be small. It could be, you know, it could make you money. It might not make you money. That's fine. What do you love to do? Think about that. Next one. What are you good at? What are things that you're good at? Write them all down. What are all of the things that you're good at? Next, what can you be paid for? Write all of the things you could be paid for. You know, Uber, public speaking, whatever it is, sales, whatever it is that you're, you've been paid for before, you could make money at in the future. What can you be paid for? Last question, question before is what does the world need? Right? And this is funny because I never did this before I started doing what I'm doing now. 
But had I done Ikigai before starting the podcast, before doing all this, I probably would have still found myself in the exact same place. Because if you look at like what I love, I love speaking. I love personal development. I didn't make any money off of personal development before I started doing podcasting and coaching and all that stuff, but I just loved it. That would have been on the list, reading, growing, getting better. Next one, what am I good at? I happen to be good at public speaking. When I first started the podcast, I had about, uh, I had about 10 years of public speaking experience before then, over 10,000 hours of public speaking experience. That would have been on the list. I am good at public speaking. Okay, cool. What can I be paid for? I could be paid for speaking. I can be paid for podcasting. I can be paid to coach people. I can be paid to run programs, build a course. Okay, and what does the world need? The world needs more people that are helping people remove themselves from their anxiety, from their stress, from their worry, all of those things, things that I think I provide. So I would have found my Ikigai, most likely, had I done this before I started the podcast as well. So I recommend trying that out to see if maybe that helps you shift and move some things into place to find out what your true purpose is here in life. You know, think about this, like, why is it that, that when you do something that you love, it's like time flies, right? It's like, you don't have to think about, oh man, like, yeah, I'm really tired today. It's like, you don't have tiredness inside of your body. It's like the energy is there. That's the universe coming through you, God coming through you, whatever it is that you wanna believe, coming through you to go, this is what it is that you're supposed to be doing. When you're doing something you don't love doing, going into a job that you hate, hanging out with people that you don't enjoy, whatever it might be, you're going to find out that there's certain things that pull the energy from you. That is one of the things that could pull the energy from you. Find out what it is that you actually get energy from and what drains energy from you. When something drains energy from you, that is the universe telling you, hey, dude, this ain't it. It's the truth. Hey, this ain't it. You've been working for the government now for 17 years. You've never been excited to walk in these doors. This ain't it. Listen to the universe. The universe will come to you and it'll speak to you very softly sometimes. You gotta be pretty, pretty silent to hear it. It's like tickling you with a feather. Then if you don't listen, the universe will get louder. It'll smack you with a brick. And then if you don't listen for even longer, it's gonna come and hit you with a truck, right? I just know someone who got fired from a job that they hated for the past 20 years. They got fired from the job that they've hated for the past 20 years. That is the universe hitting them with the truck, saying, get out of this spot. This is not what you wanna be doing. Sadly, they went right back into the same industry because they are focused on paying their bills, I guess. I don't know, but they're not searching for their passion. They're not doing something that they love doing. And so that's what'll happen is you'll start to get these feelings. It's like the, the whisper the tickling of the feather. So it's either the, the feather, then when it gets worse, it turns into a brick. When it gets worse, it turns into a truck. The feather is like, oh man, it's like the, those thoughts in the back of your head of, <clears throat> I don't really like being here. I don't, maybe I should do something else. Maybe I should quit my job and become a painter. Maybe I should, you know, go and start uh, helping homeless people. I don't, whatever it is for you, you start thinking these thoughts. That's kind of like the whisper. That's the, the tickle with the feather. Then what happens? is the universe will do something else. It'll wake you up a little bit more. And you'll start getting really anxious before you go into work. You'll start feeling depressed thinking about work. That's like the, 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 the brick. And then the truck is like getting fired, having a disease, something like that. It's a manifestation of the, the universe going, this isn't it. What you're doing isn't working. What you're doing isn't working. What you're doing isn't working. What do I need to do for you to finally listen to me? That's what's happening in this case. It's the feather, it's the brick, it's the truck. Please make a change before the truck comes. Because I promise you this, the truck's coming. It will come at some point in time. Just make sure that you're out of the way when it does. And it's the reason why you can see two people who are both 50 years old. And one of them looks like they're 60 and one of them looks like they're 40. And they can take care of themselves exactly the same. Same food, same diet, same amount of working out, all of that stuff. They can take care of themselves exactly the same. The difference is, the amount of stress that they're going through mentally based off of what they're doing with their life. So someone could be the, two people could be the exact same age, born the exact same day, but one looks 20 years older than the other one simply because they're doing, they're, they're mentally beating the crap out of themselves every single second that they're at their job and subconsciously every single second when they're outside of their job being like, I hate this job, I hate this job. Even when they're on the weekends, Saturday thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that it's Saturday, but I don't, wanna, I don't want Monday to come. I don't want Monday to come. Sunday they wake up and they're like, I'm so glad it's Sunday, but I don't want Monday to come. I don't want Monday to come. And then Monday comes and they're like, 
now I gotta go do this again. And they're mentally getting beat up by themselves because it's not what it is that they're truly supposed to be doing. And guys, this doesn't just have to do with your profession either. This can happen with your relationships too. You can wake up next to somebody and it's a relationship that's not the right relationship and the universe is trying to tell you it's not the right relationship. And it's giving you signs and feelings and signs and feelings and signs and feelings, but you're just not listening to it. The feather will come, the brick will come later. And then eventually the truck's gonna come. So you've got to always think about is what I'm doing now in alignment with what it is I'm supposed to be doing? Because if it's not, you're going to be really lazy. You're not going to want to do it. So people are always like, how do I have more energy? Can I drink more coffee? Can I have yerba mate? Is there something that I, some, some energy hacks, some neurotropics I can take? No, the change is that you've got to change what it is that you're doing because you're not in alignment with what it is that your true purpose is. And if once again, you don't know what your true purpose is, that's fine. Find it, find it, find it, find it, or else the truck will be coming at some point in time. I don't want you to get hit by the truck of this isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Listen to me already. It's the reason why doing something that you hate is so exhausting and doing something that you love brings you so much energy. That's it. It's that simple because when you're doing something that you love, something that makes you happy, something that is your full embodiment, full alignment with who you truly are, the universe will provide that energy for you. It is effortless. Time flies. But when you're doing something that you hate, the universe ain't gonna provide energy for you. It's gonna say, hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You got this. I'll let you take it from here. And then you're exhausted. And then you're tired. And then you're anxious. And then you hate what it is that you do. And then you start to put your body through unnecessary stress based on the fact that you're too afraid to make changes or to get out of your comfort zone. You've got to put yourself outside of your comfort zone and find out what it is that you truly want. That is how you stop being lazy. I'm gonna to try to answer the toughest question in the entire world, the question that every single person since the beginning of time has asked themselves. Why am I here? What's the purpose of me being here? What's the purpose of my life? And before I dive into it, let me state my ignorance, okay? I don't know all of the answers. I don't claim to know all of the answers. I definitely don't think that I know most answers. Uh, I'm 35 years old, don't claim to know everything. I don't think that I'm a guru. I never want to be a guru, any of those things. I'm still working on myself. I think I'll be working on myself to the day I die. Uh, and I've been working on growing myself for 15 years now. Uh, but with that, I have coached thousands and thousands of people over the time that I've been working on myself and working with other people. And I feel like for, for most of the boxes that people want to check off in their life, as far as you know, happiness, success, money, whatever it is that you want to say, I feel like I've checked off most of the boxes that people want to check off in their time. And I spent a good portion of my life being happy in creating some form of happiness, but more than anything else, actually just going straight for money. Like money was my main purpose in life. It's the thing I was going after more than anything else. And, you know, I was able to, to realize the way that we all know, right? That money doesn't give you happiness. Like money does not make you happy. I realized what everyone before me has ever said, right? And I knew that money didn't make me happy, but I was like, you know what? Let me make some money first and then decide if I want to be happy from there or not. It didn't change anything in my life. Everything was exactly the same. The only thing it really allowed me to do was to be able to do things that I wasn't able to do before and to be able to buy things that I wasn't able to buy before. But doing the things that I did didn't make me happy and buying the things that I bought didn't make me happy as well. So if I felt like I checked off many of the boxes that I'm supposed to check off in my life, but I still wasn't happy as I could be, or I didn't feel as fulfilled as I could be, then why the hell are we here, right? What is the purpose of this life? And my personal opinion, and once again, you can take this for what it's worth. You could take it and fully believe it. You can take it with a grain of salt. Either one is completely fine. It's completely up to you what you decide to do with this information. I think the purpose of this life is to grow spiritually. And I don't mean religiously, because I think a lot of religion actually restricts most growth and most most spiritual growth and most personal growth. And I'm not knocking religion in any sort of way. For some people, religion is the path to their enlightenment or to happiness or to fulfillment. For me, it just wasn't. And so when I say, uh, you know, and it's, it's the path, the, the work of just spirituality. For those of you guys that might be atheists or might be agnostic, Another way of saying it for you, just so everybody can kind of join in on this path that we're talking about here, is I think the purpose of us being here, if you don't want to say grow spiritually, would be just to learn. We're here to learn. That's it. That's all we're here to do. Life is a classroom. 
And that's all that I think that it is. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to get better. And hopefully by the time that we leave this place, we end up doing a pretty good job of it. I do believe that there's something after life. There's times where I've bounced before, like, you know, is there something after life? Is there, some, is there not something after life? I've bounced all around. And I personally believe that there is. Um, I personally think that we might, you know, have a lot of lives after this one. You know, there could be reincarnation. Didn't think I'd ever say that before. Uh, it could be on this planet. It could be on another planet. It could be in another dimension. It could be somewhere else that we don't know about. I don't know. I don't ever, I'll never act like I know. All I know is that I get this feeling that I'm here to learn. I get this feeling that the purpose of me being here is to grow, to learn, and to get better. This life that I have is just basically a really big classroom. And this classroom is not here when I consciously decide to step into the classroom and learn. It's not here when I sit down, you know, I consciously decide, you know what, now I'm gonna sit down and I'm, re I'm reading a book. That's not when I step into the classroom. Or when I sit down and I say, you know what, I'm gonna journal. That's not when I step into the classroom. When I step into the classroom is when anything happens in my life. Not when I just decide to journal, not when I just decide to meditate, not when I just decide to read or to write or to do something. My personal belief is that the classroom is every single second of my life. Do you feel that way? Is there something inside of you that kind of feels the same? I'm curious. I'd love to hear from you. Do you feel like it's the same? Do you think that it's different? Once again, I don't, I don't have many of the answers. I just feel like for me, this is what feels right. And once again, this isn't something that's just like, hey, when I consciously decide to sit down and do something, that's when I enter the classroom. It is every single second of my day is an opportunity to learn and to grow and to get better. That could be spiritually, that could be mentally, that could be physically, that could be in my personal growth, that could be my spiritual growth and my relationships with other people. Every single second, life, or God or the universe is throwing people in circumstances and things at me to allow me to either stay awake and wake myself up out of this autopilot that I can go into or to wake up and grow from it. The thing about it and the way that I think about it is I don't think that there's a finish line that I'll ever cross. For like a lot of people, they think, oh, well, one day I'll eventually get to the place that I wanna be. One day I'll eventually, you know, I'll eventually become enlightened. One day I'll eventually learn all the things that I learned to know, need to learn to know. One day I will get to the point where I have all of the knowledge in the world, or one day I'll finally not be stressed out or not have anxiety or whatever it is. I personally don't think that there's ever a finish line that I'll cross. I don't know if that's the truth or not. I just have the feeling for me that it is the truth. And for some people that can be stressful because they're like, oh my God, that means I'm gonna feel this way forever. Oh my God, that means that I'm never going to cross the finish line because our Western society, we're raised to think like, you have to do and produce and achieve that goal. And so when we think growing, or we think we're here to learn, or we think we're here in school, we're, we're here to learn spiritually, we think that there's supposed to be like some award that we get at the end of it, or some like test that says we got a, an A, or you know some diploma that says, hey, you, you passed the spirituality of life or whatever it is. And for some that can be really stressful to go, oh my God, I don't know if there's a finish line. I, this, is, this is literally what I'm gonna be doing forever. That's kind of stressful. But for me, it's super freeing because then I know that's all I'm here to do. There is nothing else for me to do except for me to be inside of a classroom to learn, to grow, and to get better. Now, I understand there's some people that are listening to me right now and you're like, hold on, that's not the only thing, Rob, because I'm a parent. I have to take care of my kids. I'm a spouse. I can't just not pay my bills. My wife will want to divorce me. What happens to my family if I just go on this spiritual learning journey that you're talking about? What happens if that happens? And what I'm saying to you is that if you're thinking that, I think what's happening is you're missing the point. Your growth doesn't come in spite of your family. Your growth doesn't come in spite of the people around you or, you know, you don't have to leave your family and go to India and go on some spiritual journey in order to grow spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever it is. Your growth doesn't come in spite of everyone that's around you. Your growth comes through everyone that's around you. They are your actual path. They are your path. So, you know, I remember, I, I, I think of, you know, a story that, that Ram Dass says when, you know, Ram Dass is a spiritual teacher and 
you know, he was a professor of psychology at Harvard. And then he, you know, started doing some psychedelics. He went to India, he went on the spiritual journey. You know, he was wearing a white robe. He thought that he was enlightened and he had just, you know, he was in India for a year or two years, whatever it was, and he came back and he was on, you know, nothing can bother me, life is beautiful, I'm this enlightened being. And then his dad, who was a lawyer, picks him up at the airport, and within like 15 minutes, his dad goes, so when are you gonna get a job? And immediately, set him off again. It was a trigger. And he realized in that trigger that he wasn't free. He wasn't free of his past. He wasn't free of all of the things mentally that he needed to overcome. He still had work to do. That is the perfect example of the growth coming through them, right? How many of you listening, your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister can say one thing and it triggers you. They can say one thing and it drives you nuts. They say one thing and it's like, oh my God, I was having such a good day before that happened. Your growth is on the other side of that. It's not that they trigger you, it's that they said something that brought up something in you that was already there. Nobody gives you, nobody makes you mad. What happens is they do something that brings up the madness inside of you or the anger that's inside of you. Your journey is through them, right? Your mom saying the stuff that drives you nuts. Your children having a mental breakdown inside of Chick-fil-A, right? Like your, your spiritual journey is through that moment, how you react there. Your spouse doing and saying the things that drive you crazy. You're like, oh my God, how many freaking times do I have to tell him to stop putting his underwear on top of the kitchen sink? Whatever, I don't know, hopefully your husband isn't putting his underwear on top of the kitchen sink. Whatever he's doing, he's doing something. And your spiritual journey is not in spite of that. Your growth in this world is not in spite of that. Your growth is through that all of it all of it is here for you to grow every single second is here for you to grow and i personally see all of this as a game life presents you with things with people with opportunities with circumstances to show you where you're still hung up a trigger is a teacher it teaches you where you still need to do work do i still get triggered absolutely but then i'm like oh Yep, still hung up there. Still got some work to do, Rob. It's all like a little game. And it becomes fun, in my opinion, because you start to notice this game. It's like I'm constantly playing a game all day long. And the better that you become at this game, the better that you work through, the better that your life becomes. So the better that you become at this game, the better that every single person's life becomes around you. Every single person that you're close to, everyone in your family, every single person's life becomes better when you work on yourself every single moment to become better. Does that make sense to you? Because the more you work on yourself, the better you become. And the better you become, the better the lives around you become. Not just your family, but every single person. The person that's handing you the coffee in the drive-through. That person's life becomes better by you being better and showing up there. Right? The energy that you bring to that person, the way you interact with them, it's going to be that way till the day we die. In my opinion, you know, once again, take it for what it's worth, I think it will be that way until the day we die. Every single person you come in contact with. And maybe we, we, we go on this spiritual journey and we die and we go somewhere. Maybe we die and we get another life. Maybe we die and nothing happens. I don't know. I'm not going to sit up here and just tell you that I know what happens, like a lot of people will. I don't know what the hell happens. But from my point of view, when you live your life, knowing that this is a classroom that we're going to be triggered. Those triggers are teachers that we're going to get hung up, that we're going to get agitated. We're going to get pissed off. We're going to get sad. We're going to mess things up. We're going to act in ways that we look at and look back on and wish that we would have done different. We're going to mess things up. All of those are just opportunities to show us where we need to get better next time. Not to judge ourselves, and think about how terrible that action was and to judge ourselves and to put emotion into it and to get pissed off. No, none of those things. It's the opportunity to go, yep, I see what I did there. I did mess up. You know what? Next time I'm gonna do it better. It's a teacher, it's a lesson. Every moment is a teacher. Every single moment is a lesson. And to ignore those lessons is like failing a test and then not studying before you take the test again, right? Imagine that you take a test and you don't do well in the test. And the teacher says, hey, I'll give you one more chance to take the test. Come back next week. Would you study? Of course you would. Hopefully you would. But to have a trigger happen to you, 
a lesson, a teacher happen to you and for you to do nothing before it happens again is like failing at a test, doing nothing in between the time of the next test and you take the next test and fail again. It's all just classroom. It's all just lessons. It's all just teachers. And once again, this is not just when you sit down. This is every single second of your day. Are you taking a step back and seeing what's going on in your head, seeing how you're reacting, seeing what's going on because it's all in front of you. you all, everything you need to work on in your life is literally, it's right here at every single moment to improve, to get better, to improve, to get better. You are here to learn. What are you here to learn? What are you here to grow from? Think about that, write it down. What am I here to learn? What are some of the triggers that set me off that I know I need to work on? What are some of the things that I don't like about my reactions, that I get angry too quickly, that I get emotional, that I get sad too often? What is it that, what are the emotions? What are the triggers? What is it that my mom does? What is it that my dad does? What is it that my, my spouse does, that my children do? What is it that they do that trigger me? Because once again, it's not that they're bringing that thing to you, it's that they're bringing that thing out of you. So if somebody, something happens and you get really angry, that anger was inside of you. That person didn't create the anger. That anger was inside of you. Okay, so what do I need? Why did that trigger me? And what do I need to do to release that anger so that next time that happens again, I don't react in the same way. Failed the test last time, gonna make sure I'm gonna pass the test this next time. Right, where are you still hung up? Where are the triggers that are in front of you? It's so important to think of this way and to realize we're going to be here for life, baby. Like there is no getting out of this thing. There isn't. You know, like there's literally, if you guys have been following me long enough, I have a tattoo on my wrist. You might be able to see for those of you guys that are looking online. You know, there's a tattoo on my wrist and it's a Roman numeral for 10,000, right? I've only got two tattoos. This is one of them. It's a Roman numeral for 10,000. It's an X with the line above it. And because I personally believe in the 10,000 hour rule, which is, I love the idea of mastering something. And in order to master something, it takes 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. Not just like practicing, but deliberate practice. Pushing yourself to be better. Pushing yourself, push yourself, push yourself for 10,000 hours. The reason why I got this on my wrist is because I believe that personal mastery is not just a 10,000 hour thing. Personal mastery is the rest of your life thing. And once again, like I said earlier, that can be stressful for some people to think, oh my God, I'll never get out of this race. I'll never get out of this classroom. Or, it could be really freeing knowing, I just gotta wake up and try to get better each day. I just gotta wake up and try to be nicer each day. I gotta wake up and be less angry each day. I gotta wake up and treat people better each day. I gotta wake up and do one good deed for people every single day. So what are you here to learn? Where are you still hung up? And where do you have the opportunities to grow? Because that's all that we're here to do. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. A lot of people like to go through life and not make the decision to step up. To not make the decision to step up your life and to take control of it is still a decision. You realize that, right? 